we're in Proverbs chapter 16, and we'll conclude our study here in Proverbs 16. And we're going to be at verse 18. We kind of got to pride at the end of our discussion yesterday. And now we're going to hit it head on. And this is an interesting proverb. This proverb has made it into the English language, uh, into the broader lexicon, if you can, or if you will. Uh, and we know this proverb in our broader language simply as pride goes before a fall. You know it, you've heard it. Uh, the secular world quotes it, pride goes before a fall. Well, where does that saying come from? You're with me, right? <laughs> Proverbs 16 and verse 18. It's, it's a pretty closely, uh, close to direct quote of scripture. Um, and there are many sayings like that. Um, God helps those who helps help themselves. That's not one of them. <laughs> so sometimes uh, our English language has sayings, idioms um, that are we think are scriptural, but are not. This one certainly is pride goes before fall. So let me read it, uh, the proverb, and we'll talk about it. Uh, Solomon writes, pride goes before destruction a haughty spirit before a fall. So you can tell what the English language has done. Uh, we have kind of combined this uh, part A and part B, which are basically uh, synonymous or maybe better said parallel sayings in the first and the second half of uh, verse 18. And we've, we've smushed them together. We've combined them and that's pretty typical when uh, we use scripture to, um, you know, uh, captured in the secular world, we typically get it wrong. <laughs> so pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And so I've already said that these are parallel statements, meaning that they're not exactly synonymous, but they're pretty close. So pride. Uh, Pride is not fully understanding your place in the universe, or maybe better said, it's a misunderstanding of your place in the universe, your place, uh, your worth, your importance, all of those things. It's a misunderstanding of those things, your place, your worth, and your importance. Uh, pride elevates all of those things. Pride elevates your place in the world. Pride elevates your worth uh, or worthiness. And then uh, pride elevates uh, your necessity or your importance in the world. And oftentimes we have to check our pride because it's human nature to be prideful. Um, you know, sometimes I, I get to the place where I'm full of pride to the degree that I say to the rest of the staff as they're encouraging me to take vacation. Nope, I can't take vacation. I have this, I have that, I have this. I have to make sure that happens. And I have, well, most of the staff now uh, can say in a joking way, and there's truth behind it, and I can hear it. They say, Steve, you're, you're not that important, which is a great reminder that I'm not. They're right. If I don't do that, somebody else will take it up. If this doesn't happen, the world won't come falling to an end. You know, sometimes I take the role of Mr. Atlas. Remember Mr. Atlas? Uh, he had these, I don't have the bulging muscles and stuff, of course, but he had the world on his shoulders like this. And I feel good when I'm in that place, the world on my shoulders. It helps me feel valuable. It helps me feel important. It, it, it helps me feel like I am necessary in the universe. Quite literally, I'm holding up the world. But that's only pride. 
because that's not that's not my place in the universe whose place is it to hold up the earth the lord's so the opposite of pride is humility and i think that's what's being encouraged here is humility and humility is simply if pride is not recognizing or misinterpreting or overemphasizing our place in the world then humility is simply recognizing our right place in the world and that is in relationship to god most importantly that's why i would suggest to you that an unbeliever someone who doesn't believe that uh, jesus is who he says he is and doesn't believe that jesus did and will do what he says he'll do they have a they really struggle with pridefulness because if we're not right in our relationship with God, if we don't understand our proper place in the universe, then we become God. In fact, that's known as universal or original sin. That was the sin of Adam and Eve. They wanted to be like God. And the serpent's temptation was, you surely, God surely didn't mean that you can't eat of this fruit. God surely didn't mean that this would be sinful. I mean, after all, don't you want to be like God? Don't you want to know the difference and, and the knowledge of good and evil? Absolutely. That taps into our pridefulness. So pride is bad because it leads to destruction. And the destruction here isn't specific. So it could be a whole host of things. And I'm not even going to guess at those things. But you could probably, in your own life, come up with a few things that might be covered here in destruction, especially if you've lived pridefully and you've fallen. And I must say, it's happened to me, and not just once. We live in those places of pride, and then God humbles us. Pride and the God humbles us. The second bit here is. A parallel saying, not exactly synonymous, but a haughty spirit. So uh, pride and haughty spirit, very closely related, uh, except I think haughty spirit is more uh, definitive that uh, we believe ourselves to be better than we really are. A and uh, Paul says, uh, do not consider yourself um, more highly than you ought. <laughs> Same thing. That's what the that's what Solomon is saying here in Proverbs. Uh, don't consider yourself better than others, better than God, better than others. Uh, because if you do, there will be a fall. This haughty spirit goes before fall. Goes meaning if we're living a haughty spirit then a fall is sure to come. And again, we're not sure what kind of fall is here, but it will be a humbling of us because that's the opposite of uh, pride and haughty spirit. This is, by the way, a theme throughout Proverbs. Give up pride and live into humility. And I think it's a message for every human person. None of us is exempt from the sin of pride. Why? Is, well, why is this important? <laughs> we're not exempt from the sin of pride because we're captured. We're still slaves to sin. Even though God has freed us, we're both sinner and saint. So uh, what, wh why is this important? Because pride keeps us from listening to and hearing appropriate criticism. And I think, uh, therefore, maybe thereby, we don't correct our misconceptions of ourselves and maybe um, our habits uh, that come from those misconceptions. Whereas, when we're humble, we receive criticism and we can change our 
attitudes or our thoughts or our actions and our harmful patterns of behavior. Oftentimes, we think pride is a sin mostly against the other. However, I want to suggest to you, pride is really a sin against self, and as all sin, maybe most especially sin against God. Yes, if we're prideful, it might affect another person, but really it affects us, doesn't it? It affects our hearts. When we're not able to see ourselves for who we really are. And, and by the way, um, that would be a proper conception, not a misconception. And we see ourselves through the lens of Jesus, then we're humble enough to be able to make appropriate changes in us. And that's the importance here. If you look at verse 18, who's destroyed? Who falls? It's not the other, it's us. Pride, a haughty spirit, they do destruction and damage that hurts and is quite painful. So we are encouraged to take the way, I would say maybe even the humble way of Christ. So spend some time with this text, spend maybe more importantly, some time with the Lord and ask the Lord, and do I have a right uh, conception of who I am in the universe with you? Or do I have a misconception? A am I puffed up? Am I haughty? Am I prideful? And then go to that place of humility and ask God to change you. Let us pray. God, thank you for our time together for this beautiful Friday. Bless us, Lord Jesus, into this weekend. We thank you that we're close to celebrating together on the Sabbath. Help us to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Knit us together, Lord Jesus, as your body. Remind us that we are equally important to the work, to the ministry, to the mission of our various congregations, and more broadly, your kingdom. A break the spirit of pride that is in us. Make us humble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to be with you, friends. God bless you. Bye.